Okay, all right. Very good, very good. You guys in the back are working really hard right now. That's good. Uh, is this thing on? Is it on? Okay. So this is the thing, folks. We don't ha- uh, know if this will ever broadcast. I'm hoping so. Uh, it's somewhat of a quote-unquote illegal transmission. But right now, I kid you not, we are transmitting the 32nd episode of the Yin and the Yang right here in Mormon Manor in the glorious Studio A. And I must say, I've never been here before. This is one hell of a huge room. It is beautiful. It's everything that that defines the egotistical maniac uh, that Mormon actually is. Studio A, I, I'm telling you, this makes my studio look like Studio F. But here's the thing. Now, Jeremiah, you sure he's asleep, right? He's not anywhere around. He, You could tell you're going to be on the lookout. All right. Well, I know you're doing the sound. I get it. Right. Right. But look, it, I, I'm not trusting you with the gun. I'm not going to have you hold the Glock this time. OK, I'm going to explain that all that bit, man. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, I want to welcome you to the uh, first ever historical breakthrough podcast that is groundbreaking, record shaking. Um, I am obviously um, the one name that you need to know in this broadcast. Um, Anthony Chu, aka Chuzilla, the Ultimate Thriller, All Muscle, No Filler, baby. And I'm the former two-time USW Heavyweight Champion. And I'd like to introduce you to my technical team right now. Uh, now this this room. Now Jeremiah, you did tell me this room is soundproof, right? He can't hear me. I can scream all I want, and he can't hear me up there. Because, you know, I think he's situated on like the second or third floor of the manor. So he can't hear me, right? Good. Okay. So listen, here's the deal, right? Um, On my technical team tonight, Jeremiah is on the soundboard. And Jeremiah is doing the intros. He's going to do all the editing. And he's going to do all that stuff. Now, I have assigned the second man uh, in this totem pole here, Winston is going to be the he's he's known as Winston the Wizard that's what he wants me to intru- introduce him as who's going to be doing the security the lookout he's the one with the he has a baton he has a couple of screamer sticks a a Kali knife um you know um I think he also found uh, uh oh yes and gentlemen you have your gloves on right that way we don't leave any evidence good okay good um so now basically um the final person is my personal right hand man um, uh, wait a minute. I mean, uh, I mean, uh, I meant he's my personal assistant. I mean, I uh, damn it. Ensign, who's my fucking golfer. All right. And he's just going to get me whatever I need. And right now, what I need you to do is give me a nice cold, tall glass of shut the fuck up for yourself. Anyway, now, um, Ensign is, is going to be, uh, our Lord knows what he's doing. He's probably, he's probably, uh, jerking the meat right now. Anyway, now that we've gotten, all that out of the way, I want to formally and publicly announce that this is not the, an episode of the yin and yang like you think. I want to welcome you all, commandos, militants, to the Anthony Chu Show. And yes, ladies and gentlemen, on this inaugural show, we are going to talk some special ge- to some special guests. Uh, MMA is uniting against an enemy. Uh, and we'll talk about that. We'll review the first two episodes of Cobra Kai. A nine-second knockout was at hand and a whole lot more. But right now, to join me in this endeavor, right now, I kid you not, folks, to join me to Commando Cast, to Militant Cast, this program, allow me to introduce to you my partner in crime. You ready, ladies and gentlemen? Here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, he is the corrupt conniving, self high fiving, wheeling dealing, Ponzi scheming, money dreaming, betraying heathen, owner, guru, and the king of the more of the same network. And ladies and gentlemen, no, he has still not made it into the Hollywood list of uh, pedophiles and sexual harassers. He is Larry. I hate Hawaii. I need a drink. I have a perfect voice. 
and I should be on the radio, what the fuck, and fuck the world, Mormon. Hmm. Larry, are you there? Larry? Are you? Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's try this again. He is the imitating, uh, integrating, masturbating, uh, hallucinating, ejaculating, uh, uh, owner, guru, uh, Ponzi student. Man known as Larry, I should have screwed you to Mormon. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Larry, are you there? Are you there? Of course he's not, ladies and gentlemen. He's not here because last episode, what did that jabroni do? He challenged me to a solo show because he doesn't think I can last 30 minutes on this broadcast booth. Well, I don't need to promote the living hell out of myself and give a one-sentence introduction to my co-host because I am the show, the whole effing show. Now, not only that, I have Jeremiah, I have Winston, and I have that other prick, uh, Ensign. I don't need anyone else. That's my entourage. You're listening right now to the Anthony Chu Show. Now, through the miracle of technology, let me channel my inner Larry Mormon, and I'm going to interview him personally. So, Larry, let me ask you, Brother Lawrence, how does it feel to be on the Anthony Chu show? <clears throat> well, you know, you're, you're the you're the best. What can I say? There's nobody like you. I would play second fiddle, second string, second rate. Is that how you feel? Pretty much. Oh, really? You really think? Well, tell me something. Who is your favorite podcasting personality and who is your favorite celebrity on the more of the same network? Well, you know, it's got to be you because, uh, you know, I, I, I get on that uh, yin and yang podcast and I don't even listen to the retro gamers. The retro gamers sucks. I, I listen to I only tolerate Frank, but we all know I'm the better half. And I listen to your show and I, I download it and I listen to it. A thousand, two thousand, six thousand, ten thousand times. Really? That much? Just about. Can you say anything besides pretty much and just about? Pretty much, just about. Boy, you say as you say that as many times as as uh as Ripple just goes, not for nothing, not for nothing, not for nothing, not for nothing. Shut up! Nobody needs to hear that shit. This is the Anthony Show, Chew Show. I am doing a hostile takeover, and right now, we're going to... So, let me explain why Larry's not here. Last night, Larry went out drinking. He got so drunk, he came home, and uh, Thaddeus actually... Thaddeus basically had to help him, strip him down. And, well, okay, let, let's, not, uh, let's not talk about the rest of that, okay? He's only a limo driver, supposedly, right? But anyway... Uh, The whole point of it is it was just a really, really, really weird one, man. And uh, I personally just think that that was just odd as living hell. But, you know, again, who am I, right? So um, let me go ahead right now and let's start up the agenda. I want to praise the interns for having the balls to come out here to help me do this show. All right. Now, before I do that. Wait a minute. Um, listen, hey, uh, we're on DEFCON, not three. We're not on DEFCON four. We are on DEFCON five. Um, Jeremiah, you, you stay right there. Winston, go go get the door. I want to know who it is. All right? Hold on a second. Let's see what the hell this is. How you been? Oh yes, well fans, hey, sit down, have a seat, take some, uh, take some of Larry's uh, 
Jim Beam Southern Comfort. He has lots of alcohol here. Check up, have a seat. Put on the, uh, you know, take a swig for the working man and don't choke like that bitch did, okay? Anyway, so um, how you guys doing, man? I know you're not staying long. I know you got to go out and, uh, you know, work the opium den. I mean, uh, the uh, restaurant tonight. So um, it is uh, pretty late, man. I don't know why you guys are open at like, you know, two in the morning. But that's a different story. None of my business. Anyway, so, um, you know, my cousin's gin. Uh, and my other cousin, Zen, that I always uh, hang out with and stuff like that, they actually just came recently uh, from uh, they recently came from China. And, uh, you know, they basically last time I seen them, I haven't seen them in years. It's been like, what, 10, 15 years. Uh, but, you know, they all live in uh, the northeast and uh, and they came by. See, how do you like the humble abode? This is my studio. How do you like the studio, guys? Nice stuff, right? Yeah. Hey, listen, drink as much alcohol as you want. So uh, now that you're in America, I'm I'm just curious to know, like, uh, you know, are you having a good time and all that? You know, have you have you guys actually studied up on some uh, English right now? Because I uh, do need to ask you a couple of things. So, uh, well, actually, let me just ask you one question. Though. What do you think of uh, what's your impression, you know, your impression of America right now? What do you think? Uh, sure. I bet you. I, I didn't even know your your English was that good. Okay. Well, what's your impersonation of Americans? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. Hey, I really, really want that. That looks good. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's not bad. That kind of sounds like Larry. You know, when he's out in the conventions and he just splurges all the the network's money. They see. <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, Zen, what do you think? Hey, hey, hey. Red Red I'll use my credit card. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds just like Larry. <laughs> Especially when he's a game on. Do you have any non creamer? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, guys, this is just funny as hell. I got to go do a show, man. I, I, You know, it's it's we're already at least 15, 20 minutes in, some shit like that, man. Uh, dude, that, that must have been – I don't think that you're drinking Jim Beam, by the way. That's a different story. But listen, um, uh, if you want, uh, take some of that powdery shit on the side to go, all right? Um, anyway, I'll catch up with you later. You take it easy, okay? All right, love you, fellas. Take care. Um, Jeremiah, hold a gun. And uh, if they turn around and, uh, you know, why try some shit, shoot them, okay? They don't know. They don't know what I'm saying. But anyway, um, you know, because we're not taking any chances tonight. That prick may wake up like a sleeping, hibernating grizzly bear and come in here and try to attack. So we're not taking any chances. Anyway, so let's get on with the show, right? So um, I had a long, interesting week. Uh, it's been a little crazy out there. Uh, for the last few uh, days, just uh, took some time off. I actually haven't been in the gym in nearly a week. And the reason for it is simply because, you know, let's put it this way. Uh, I Sometimes like after you've gone through so much intensity, your body needs some sort of rest and your body needs to recuperate. And I had some nagging injuries and I know that I should be doing a lot better than that. I need to train uh, and all that, but I needed, I at least did some walking, you know, but nothing intense. So I, I feel great. Today was the first day back in training. I ran about uh, two and a half miles and it it was unbelievable. And uh, speaking of that, actually, it's a pretty interesting segue talking about running and cardio and all that other stuff is something that's long standing. And I had seen, and we we tried to get into it in the last episode, but as Larry always is, he tries to segue into something else. And uh, I got to see the first two episodes of Cobra Kai, and I got to see the original uh, Karate Kid on screen. Now, what's amazing about that is that the – now, here's what bothers me, okay? And th- I had thought that they were going to show the original movie – and they were going to bring you back to 1984, give, set up the premise of it, and then show the 
next to the first two episodes of Cobra Kai. Instead, what they did was they showed the first two episodes in the beginning and then brought you back to 1984, which I thought was absolutely stupid because now you got a lot of these kids in the audience. Now, remember, in 1984, I was only eight years old. I'm watching this movie. I'm a huge fanboy, and so are many, many people. I'll get to that in a minute. And what happened was a lot of these kids that grew up that were my age or around my age grew up, and now they have children. And they're taking their children to go see this show and this movie. And they're all sitting there, and a lot of the kids don't understand who's Johnny Lawrence, who's Ralph Macchio. Now, unless you were schooled in the movie and you saw it before, you wouldn't understand why they are or why they say what they say and do what they do. So somebody royally fucked up there. And I just don't understand how. Uh, I don't understand why they would have done something like that. And um, so they did it in reverse because I thought they were going to show the movie. And then what would happen is they'll sh- the first two episodes right after is going to show you what happened 34 years later. They reversed the timeline. So a lot of kids are kind of sitting there confused. And I got to say, I am very, very impressed by Cobra Kai because – And understand, let's understand a few things here, okay? Number one, this is 34 years after um, the premise of the original Karate Kid. The last time these two met was at the 1984 All-Valley Karate Tournament, where Daniel basically uh, beat Johnny. Now, they haven't seen each other since. Now, I find that a little odd because, you know, 34 years later, they both live in the valley in California within the same vicinity. How do you not see one another, right? So the way that it starts is you see Johnny Lawrence is completely in the dumps. He's in the shits. I mean, the guy is in such bad shape that he literally lives his life like he's a poor you can even call him like a like a like a hobo in a way. He he has no direction, no focus. He just lives day to day. He lives off alcohol, uh, some pills, and he's just a messed up life. Now, what's interesting is that a lot of bullies in real life do end up like this. Now, I looked at some of the people that bullied me in school, and I look at them, and they're all either drugged out or they're doing what, nothing with themselves. They don't have any sense of direction at all. And then on the opposite end of the spectrum, within the first two episodes, you see that, um, you know, Daniel LaRusso is doing really well for himself. He has multiple car dealerships uh, because of his two All Valley Karate wins. He uses a marketing gimmick of martial arts. He's chopping prices. He's kicking the competition. Uh, You buy a car, you get a bonsai tree, you know, but... Um, like what Mr. Miyagi says, nothing is always as seem, uh, nothing is always as it seems. And, um, you know, Johnny's dealing with a lot of demons. Uh, he cannot, it's almost virtually as this character is stuck in the 1980s and he has nowhere to go. This is where Larry goes. Oh, really? Right. Um, and you know, or I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I, I need to do it better. Really? Yeah, that, there you go. There you go. So, yeah, yes, really, Larry, he's like stuck in the 1980s, kind of like I am with wrestling. And there's nothing wrong with that because, oh, oh, well, oh, oh, well, that's for sure. That's for sure. Right. That's probably what Larry would say if he was here. And, um, yeah, basically the guy is non PC. He just says what he wants to say. Um, he, it's almost as if he got stuck there. He's driving a 1984 Pontiac Firebird, if you can imagine that. That must probably be a sweet valued vehicle. Um, and LaRusso's just doing so well for himself that he's in that modern day era. But LaRusso is not exactly out of the woods either. Um, since Miyagi, Mr. Miyagi passed on in 2011. So technically speaking, Mr. Miyagi would have been 86 years old uh, and a member of the 442nd you know, combat uh, regiment. And, um, uh, you know, and basically Mr. Miyagi's passed on for years now and, uh, Daniel, it just doesn't know how to move on. He's lost his balance. 
He doesn't do karate anymore. Um, you know, you see he lives a beautiful life, but he doesn't have – something's missing. Like there's a void. And both of these gentlemen are expressing how they feel based upon the only way they know how, which is karate. And the way they express it is that uh, Johnny Lawrence has a stepfather who's old but yet very rich, um, kind of like Larry will be someday, old and rich. And what's going to – yeah, through other people's hard work, blood, sweat, and tears, and him scheming their money. And what would happen is uh, he would basically supply and get Johnny out of everything, and he buys Johnny out. He gives him a lot of money. So what does Johnny do? He got his car uh, crashed, uh, got into a massive accident, and the girls that hit his vehicle apparently – are Daniel LaRusso's daughter and her two friends. So now he gets this, his car towed to LaRusso's auto group. And he finally sees Daniel for the first time. And Daniel is made out somewhat to be like a bully in a way. He's kind of like a little hothead. And, you know, he's a bit of a hothead. And he also is very, very uh, kind of egotistical. Because, you know, when you are making that much money, um, you got to guess that he's pretty much, uh, you know, He's pretty much well off, and and I guess that must have get to your head a little bit. So um, he offers to fix Johnny's car, no charge. They bicker a little bit, and there's a a, a Spanish kid from Ecuador uh, who lives in the same building as Johnny, and pretty much he's bullied. And one night, uh, Johnny wants to go get a pizza from a local mini mart. And he comes out and he sees these kids bullying this kid who's his neighbor. And Johnny uses old school karate that he was taught in Cobra Kai. And he literally kicks the ever loving shit out of these uh, four guys. And, and this um, eventually, you know, he's humiliated by going to LaRusso's dealership. And he uh, takes the money that's given to him by his stepdad. And he pretty much opens, reopens a Cobra Kai dojo. Now, in response to this, um, there was a huge misunderstanding, and then Daniel pretty much vows to Johnny that you opening up Cobra Kai is one of the worst things you can ever do. How could you do that ever since, you know, what happened to you with Cobra Kai and your history? So in response, he says to Johnny, this is not over. And I'm not going to reveal the rest, but if you guys can subscribe to YouTube Red, trust me, it is unbelievable. Unbelievable. So I think you guys will get a, a real kick out of that, right? So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, what was that, Winston? Oh, we have a, a, a first, oh, our second guest. Oh, okay, all right. Well, let him in, let him in. You know, he, uh, holy shit, he looks kind of drunk right now. Um, Winston, where'd you find this guy? Uh, in the corner. Okay, uh, why did you find he, what? He was the only person out there. Yeah, that's it. Well, you know, two in the morning. Who the hell would be out there, right? All right, man. Um, no shit. Oh man, this guy smells ho- fucked up. Have a seat, and I'm um, gonna ask you. Uh, holy smoke, man. Uh, put on. Uh, 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 what? What? Uh, Jeremiah. Give him those uh, really, really nice, expensive headphones that Larry puts on. Those really expensive, the four, no, that five hundred dollar one right there. Give it to him. Yeah, put it on. Make the man feel good. Put 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 on the five hundred dollar headphones. Um, hey, just don't leave any bed bugs in here and shit like that. Okay, all right. All right. Listen. So, uh, all right. Well, you're on a podcast called The Yin and the Yang. Uh, state your name. All right. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, 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 Georgia, man. Uh, excuse me. I told you to state your name, not name your state. Hey, 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 look at here, man. You know, oh, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't understand, man. Oh, why, why I'm here, man. You know, because, see, uh, see, yeah, uh, uh, oh, uh, I'm a, a, a bona fide pimp. 
Oh, so you're a bona fide pimp, man. What? How? What? Let me ask you a question. You're outside at two in the morning. What makes you a bona fide pimp? Well, you know, uh, you know, I'm trying to get some money, man, uh, off my my holes. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> nah, nah, ha, 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 ha. Hey, 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 hey. Uh, so, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's your name, brother? Yeah. Oh, uh, oh. Uh, you, uh, you, you, you can call me, uh, uh, Kenny. Okay. All right, Kenny. Welcome to the Yin and the Yang. Uh, you seem like you're doing a pretty good job. Uh, uh, shake off those cobwebs, man. Uh, uh, hey, hey. Give him some of that, uh, whatever that white shit is over there. Yeah, give, give him some, man. man. All right, hey, listen. <sighs> whoa, 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 whoa. Not so loud, man. You got kids listening to the show. What the hell are you doing to them? Yeah, 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 man. You know, uh, you know I'm I'm uh, ready to do a, a, a show, man. You know, uh, because, see, see, look at here, man. You know, I, I, I'm I'm uh, running in the uh, players club. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, uh, what, 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 what would you want me to do, man? Because, you know, uh, my my time is uh, uh, money. Man, I don't need you to do a goddamn thing. I don't even understand why you're here. I don't understand why Ensign or... Um, Winston even has you on the show, quite frankly. And quite frankly, I, I, he needed to get me a, a better guest. But you know what, Kenny? How about we make a deal, all right? How about you give a nice plug to all your player pimp friends, let them know what podcast you're listening to. And by the way, you actually have done a better job in a minute and a half than Mike have done 30 episodes with my partner here. You know, 30, 31 episodes. I can't believe it. You've just done a man. Amazing. Listen, Kenny, I don't want to take up too much of your time because listening to you talk and getting a sentence out will take all fucking year. But anyway, uh, give a, a nice little humble shout out uh, uh, to uh, anybody you want. Oh, yeah, man. You know, uh, I want to give a, 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 a shout out, man, to... Uh, my benefactor, man, uh, you know, uh, 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 his name uh, is uh, 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 Pretty Tony. And, uh, you know, I won't give a shout out, man, to, uh, you know, my my hoes. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, 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 Melinda. Oh, oh. Roxy, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, shoot, goddamn, I forgot who the third one is, man, but, uh, you know, uh, ain't nothing that another Red Bull can't do, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey, uh, uh, hey, 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 listen, just give a shout out to the podcast, take your $20, and, uh, uh, uh whatever, oh, oh, um, and by the way, no, give the man, listen, no, don't give him no $20. Give this man, um, go into Larry's little uh, safe over there, um, Jeremiah. Do me a favor, just uh, turn the, the the combination. It's uh, I think it was at eight thirty eight. Okay, so eight, not thirty eight, but eight three zero and eight, and give this man a couple of hundred dollars here. Okay, he needs to take care of himself. All right, uh, hey, hey, give him uh, some money here. Okay, now uh, now can he give me a shout out here? Of, uh, hey, uh, you know, uh, when I'm not, uh, slapping, uh, my bitch up, man, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I listen to the, uh, uh, what is the name of the podcast again? It's called the Yin and the Yang. Yeah, man, you know, uh, all my players and hoes, man, you know, uh, they listen to the Yin and the Yang, man, because, see, uh, you can't get no better than perfect, man. All right, now get your ass out of here. All right, all right you have a good day, all right? Uh, and uh, uh, hey, 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 Ensign, where the hell are you going? He's not going to get you a whore. Come, come back here. Come here, sit down. 
Jesus Christ, I, I, I'm not asking you for anything. Just have a seat. Stop, cr- stop crying. I said, I'll slap the shit out of you. Stop crying. Relax. All right. Jesus Christ. Huh? Let's see. I'm sorry. What was that, Jeremiah? Okay. Um, so, I'm sorry, Jeremiah. You just said I just exceeded 30 minutes. Look at that. Look at that. I have just exceeded the time that Larry has had for me. He, he, I proved him wrong. We proved him wrong, gentlemen. That's right. Fuck that guy. We proved him wrong. I was the best technical team in the world. And you know what that deserves? A yes. 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 All right. Now, okay. Now that I'm fired up, I have what has to be, I kid you not, a literal. I I don't even know where to begin with this one because this is just some really, really fucked up shit. Um, I mean, if you want to talk about screwed up, this is just beyond fucked up. And I don't even know how to describe this because this week's shootout out is everything that Larry and I talk about. I can't understand or even fathom how this could actually be. So without further ado, my friends, let's bring up that uh, favorite quote of ours. I spit in the face of people who don't want to be cool. Now, this week's shootout, I kid you not, is something that I can't even believe. For fucking once, it's not only America that always gets that blame for, oh, our students are unachieving, our students are like, well, we're low in education, and this is not the greatest country in the world when it comes to that anymore, right? Uh, now, there's actually another country that's fucking up too, can you believe this? Can you actually fucking believe this? Now, this is coming from an article on Fox. And the article is called, What Time Is It? Schools are removing old-fashioned clocks because kids can't tell time. Now, this is based out of London, England, right? Listen to this, guys and gals out there. Some British schools, and I and I quote, some British schools are removing old school clocks because students cannot read them. Yes, we're talking about clocks with a quote unquote face and quote unquote hands. The current generation aren't good at reading the traditional clock face as older generations. According to Malcolm Trobe, who is the deputy general secretary at the Association of School and College Leaders, the ASCL, uh, told by the ter- uh, Telegraph which is actually a, uh, a commercial channel uh, or a news channel uh, across the pond. And they are used to seeing a digital representation of time on their phone, uh, on their computer. Uh, excuse me, on their phone or on their computer. Jesus, this person has the grammatical skill level of uh, Ensign over here. He said that having to figure out what time it is using an analog clock may be too stressful during exam time. So as a result, we are removing all, uh, all uh, what was it, uh, the all clocks and replacing them with digital ones instead of analog. You fucking brainless dumb fucks. Are you cu- fucking kidding me? You're telling me you're removing the analog clocks because these stupid hocus pocus dumb fucks over across the pond, it, we haven't even gone to that level yet in America. We're fucking eating Tide Pods and sniffing condoms, but for Christ's sake, we haven't removed analog clocks yet. Um, excuse me, but has anybody in this country not fucking thought about at least, gee, let's see, how about teaching the kids how to use the fucking thing? Then it won't be extinct anymore like Jurassic Park or like Larry's podcasting career. Or my podcasting career soon when he actually hears this. What the fuck, folks? Have we lost our fucking minds? Are we really raising a generation of pussies out there? You know, I don't want to sound like I'm 200 years old, but in my day, all right, my father, I remember when I came back home, first grade, six years old, by the way, for those of you across uh, internationally, come home and... uh 
I didn't know how to read the clock. My father would stress the living daylights out of math and basic things like reading a clock, learning how to calculate things without using a calculator. Right. And every time I didn't do it, my father would yell at me or slap me in the shoulder really hard. At least when I was a kid, that was considered really hard at the time. And it's like you're telling me you can't just figure it out, teach them the right way. No, nothing. Are are you kidding me? Now, uh, I posted this up on my social media page and uh, my my headline is quite simple. It just says, what the flying fuck? Right now. This is what some of my friends had to say. Uh, our dear President Rippo over at the uh, at the Retro Gamers basically said his response to the article was because taking five minutes to teach them how to read is just too hard, right? Um, I have a friend named Dave. Dave writes and basically says uh, we are ticked off. Ha ha ha! That's really funny. Our one of my good friends, Glenn, basically writes, what about teaching kids how to use real money? That's a dying form itself. Damn good point. Uh, My friend Diana writes, why remove it? Teach it. Let them learn it. Teach it. It pisses me off because I was taught. Uh, My parents had to get more involved in teaching their children. And I am getting involved to teaching my children to, uh, to get to learn and how to read time. Serious. This is the nation uh, getting lazy. Not meaning this nation, meaning the uh, meaning England. And my friend uh, Henry basically writes, wow, sheesh, what the hell's going on here? So, folks, I'm not alone in this. This is absolutely just stupid. So, you know what? I'm going to end this segment in a form of a question. You know what the question is? Do you know what happens when stupid public educators, parents, legal guardians, counselors, when anybody who can't teach these kids how to do something so they just throw it away. Well, I guess maybe if we had, if we don't have toilet paper, what are we going to do? Just wipe our hands with our ass? Uh, That may be what Huang did back in the day, but that's a little bit different. But listen, you know what happens, huh? London, England, you know what happens? This is where Larry goes, hit him with a chew. Right? You've just been chewed out! God fucking damn it. The hell is wrong with these people? You know, I have a lot of respect and admiration for the English. Yeah, they used to own half the world or more. Yeah, they sold opium over to my... Well, I'm sorry. That, that's a different story. But anyway, listen. I have nothing but respect and admiration. And, I, uh, and I've met, I'll come across a lot of very intelligent uh, people across the pond. They're very good, respectable, honest people. But come on, this is not the way. Now, you could take yourself off the list if you bring the clocks back. But until then, you've just been chewed out. Shit. Anyway, um, so leading into our next segment here. I'm sorry, what was that? Winston, you heard, just heard something? Hey, hey, hold on to that, that, that bat, okay? Take the one with the barbed wire over there and... Uh, Ooh, why is it sticky? But anyway, that's it. Just hold on to the bat, okay? Well, we may have somebody here. Hold on a second, folks. I'll be, uh, just give me one quick second. Do, Jeremiah, do not turn this off. Just keep it rolling, okay? I got to know who this is. Ah, let's see what the hell this is now. He's a legend. He's an a Hollywood A-lister. The man is just, oh my lord! Please, sir, please. Uh, Winston, get him some green tea right now. Give the man, uh, take the, don't give him a folding chair. Give the man, uh, Larry's, uh, uh the, his Game of Thrones chair right over there. But let him sit down on it right now. Get him a cigar. Get him whatever he needs. Get him a, get him a girl if you want. I don't care. Listen. All oh, right, that's right. You don't know what you don't know what it's like to bang a girl. Um, 
Uh, uh, Winston, work on that, please. Okay, come here. Oh my God, sir. I, I am, oh my Lord, I cannot believe who I have in the studio, sir. Welcome to the Anthony Chu Show. Welcome to uh, the, well, what was formerly known as the yin and the yang uh, for this episode. I want to welcome personally to the a, a historical first, an A-lister Hollywood celebrity, Mr. Steven Seagal. I cannot believe you are in the studio, sir. I can't even believe you're not asleep at like 2.33 in the morning, but that's a different story. We're uh, doing a hostile takeover here. This is Studio A. Mikasa, Sukasa, please just, uh, you know, uh, just have a seat and uh, welcome once again to the Anthony Chu Show. It's a pleasure to be here. Well, I, I appreciate that, sir. I, I know that your time and your, your schedule is really busy. And it's just, I can't believe I'm having you here. He goes, well, it's a pleasure to be here. You know, I, I took my time off uh, filming the next uh, uh, three-word title for my movie. And, you know, after uh, I, I heard a lot of the good things that you've said about Above the Law. No, absolutely, sir. I, I, that is a phenomenal film. 30 years in the making. But I, I can't believe that your partner here... He's never he's never seen the movie. What is he living under a rock? I don't know, sir. I be very honest with you. I have no clue. Uh, I'm going to make sure he watches it, sir. Can you can um, uh, uh, Jeremiah get immediately get all my Steven Seagal movies. Have this man sign it for me. Mr. Seagal, it would be an honor and a privilege for you to sign, you know, the uh, you know, all my DVDs. And uh, go, I, I don't take pictures. No, it's, I don't want you to take a picture. No, no, it's okay. Uh, oh, what you can do is can you do a, a humble little spot for the yin and the yang? Can we change the subject, please? Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. We can definitely change the subject. But no, I, now I, I know that, you know, you, you look great. You look like you're still doing your Aikido. It's called Aikido. Yes, yes, you're absolutely right. Aikido. Um, it's just a phenomenal art. You know, we were talking about how great all your movies are. Uh, even the glimmer man, uh, you know, um, I was forced to do that one. Yes, I understand that. You know, so, um, let me ask you a question. I I'm, I'm curious to know who do you think are some of the, you know, like, can you name a tough guy, a guy that, you know, let's say if you were in some really fucked up situation and, and you wanted to, you know, need somebody on your side to kick some ass. You know, who who would you name? Oh, that's an easy one. It would be you, because you know I, you're a you're a Wing Chun master, and I heard that you know you can you can kick some ass too. You know, and, and uh, you know don't let the age fool you because age is nothing but a number, and uh, I've proved it from all the way from above the law, all the way to Steven Seagal lawman. That was on TV. Now, I don't believe in any of those bullshit allegations, sir. You are a true martial artist. I thank you very much for the plug, by the way. I really didn't expect you to say that. Oh, you're quite welcome. No, I, I, I thank you. I appreciate that. So listen, I know that your Aikido is at a very high level. And um, can you uh, give me an idea? What is the source or the secret to your martial arts, uh, to your mastery? Well, you know, it's like, uh, you know, you got to have some type of medi meditation process, you know, like when you're you're at home and like, let's say you had a bad day and all you want to do is fill yourself up with a dozen fucking Twinkies. And yeah. instead, you know, you just take some green tea, you sip and then you you put on a little candle. And all of a sudden and what happens is, you know, you know, you just basically sit and, and think and reflect. And all of a sudden, these things start just, they start, just start to change. Well, I agree. Um, anybody ever tell you that you kind of sound like Marlon Brando? Well, I'm not fat and dead. <laughs> so what the fuck do I care? Can Marlon Brando do Aikido? Oh, no, 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 no. Sir, I'm not trying to disrespect you. 
can Marlon listen? He may be Superman's father, but can he snap arms and fucking legs like I can? Huh? Can he fucking do that? Did you ever see Out for Justice? You ever see what I fucking did to William Forsythe? I saw I fucking slapped the shit out of him. I know I did see it. You're absolutely right. It, it, in fact, could you personalize my Out for Justice? Absolutely, I can fucking do that for you. You know, it's like it's like uh, you know, it's like I looked at him and said, "Oh, Richie." Why don't you fucking come over here and try that with me? I have a set of fucking balls. No, that's good. That was good. Oh, I, that, that's a line. That was a line in the fucking movie. What are you shaking for? No, it's not me shaking, sir. I, it's just the AC is really, really high up in here. Um, then we'll turn, we'll turn it the fuck down. Oh, you're right. You're right, sir. Absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, um, I have one other question. Well, just make it fast because I got to run. I got to go out into uh, to get some rest for the uh, shooting of my next film. Okay. I understand. So um, I is there any way before you go, can you show us some uh, – excuse me. Excuse me. Hold on a second. If you'd please. I just got to get off the air something here. Hey, fucko, what the fuck are you doing with that, with Mr. Chew's fucking mints? That, are those your fucking mints? Did did you, what is your, what's your fucking name? Edson, is it? It, 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 it? That's your fucking, what the fuck kind of a stupid name is that, huh? Is it, is it, what, what, have you lost your fucking mind? Maybe I should have fucked your mother and I would have had a better name. Now listen, put down the mints. I'm fucking serious. Put down the fucking mints. No, you're not paying for that. He already fed you. No, Mr. Seagal, uh, now please, it's it's okay. You don't have to. No, 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 it's not okay. Put down the fucking mints now. Put down the fucking chocolates and I saw you take a chocolate bar from over there on the sideline. If you don't put it down, I'm going to shove it down your fucking throat. Oh, my God. This is going to get a Oh, man. No, wait a minute. Uh, Mr. Seagal. No, no. Please, please, please. Just take another sip of your green tea. No, I don't fucking like that. He's taking shit that's not his. Well, I really, uh, be honest with you, sir, I just took over the entire studio. Yeah, but that's different. I don't, I don't like your partner. Okay. Okay. Understand. Understand. Um, Now, what is your last question? Because I got to get going. So, um... I just, you know, you have a very high level of Aikido, and I just was wondering if you could help me perform some moves. Oh, you want to see some moves, huh? All right. I could definitely do that. That's not a problem. What's that fucking kid's name over there again? Yeah, Ensign. Ensign, hey, come over here. Yeah, let me show you something. Yeah. Uh, What's that other kid's name over there? Uh, Winston? Yeah, Winston. Get some... uh. Get some Gorilla Glue and uh, and some duct tape over there and put it across his mouth so we don't have to hear him fucking scream. Come over here, kid. Here, so, you know, so Anthony, the first thing you got to do, you got to take this little fuck and you just got to punch him right in the face like that. Oh, mm, mm. And then you take his fucking hand here and you fucking put it right underneath your armpit and you, oh, my God. Oh, M- Mr. Seagal, no, wait a minute. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Holy fucking shit! Oh my god! Ensign! Ensign! Are you alright? Yeah. Oh, he'll be fine. You know, just a little fucking physical therapy for three more weeks, and he'll he'll be all right. Stop crying like a bitch. Yeah. Oh, well, Mr. Seagal, I just wanted to thank you so much for coming here. Oh, my God. He's he's not going to bleed, is he? People with broken bones don't fucking bleed. (laughs) All right. I understand. Uh, um, That's not a problem. 
But thank you so much for coming on the show. I appreciate your time. I appreciate your patience. Uh, we'll take care of this. We'll cover the medical cost. You know, and uh, I appreciate that. All right? Oh, yeah. One more thing. Hey, but you, would, you know, the other thing is if you really want to make sure he's not going to get the fuck up, what you got to do is you got to take his fucking leg. Oh, my God. And you just got to do this. Yeah, you have a good fucking day. Holy shit. Uh, hey, hey, uh, Winston, do me a favor. Get him, uh, get him into a hot, get, like, uh, no, don't call 911. You, you don't want to do that. Um, the, the, just move him over there on the side or some shit like that. Let him sit down. Uh, cause I, I don't know what the hell to do at this point. So it really just doesn't matter to me. But anyway, he's, he was fucking useless. It's you and Jeremiah, you and Jeremiah. Anyway. So for the first time, a historical first, we actually had a, a guest on the show and he's a Hollywood. See, now do I pull the stars or do I pull the stars? What hey, did I not say? Huh? I, I pulled an amazing Holly, a wood. A-listing Hollywood celebrity on the show. I, I, yes, I am a, a genius. I know. Now, folks, we got to take care of the people. We got to, we got to make sure that um, the people are taken care of, and we have a Q and A session right now. So, the first, uh, the first uh, question comes from a gentleman named Mister Lombard at AOL. AOL. You must be the last fucking person on earth using a AOL, but okay. Shut your fucking mouth. Stop crying. He's still crying over there. You believe this shit? Anyway, um, so uh, Mr. Lombard asked, gentlemen, great show. Want to hear more about uh, your child, any travel stories uh, during your time uh, of the USW? I remember one time we had to travel to this one uh, town called Mianus, and uh, I just couldn't understand exactly why on earth uh, we had to go to this town. It was a, uh, it was actually a population of about no more than like was it four or five hundred people. We performed the show there, and it was really weird uh, because you know the anti USW we traveled with one another, and then Larry uh, tried to basically escaped the bill so we ate at this uh, one Denny's that was the next town over and when we ate there I kid you not uh, the bathroom was broken so me Dragoon um, me Dragoon uh, Killer Instinct uh, El Gran Maestro and uh, Chris Anderson you know meaning Larry well we had to no 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 I'm sorry it wasn't uh, it wasn't Chris Anderson it was uh, much too sweet and we were all sitting down and we were eating. And all of a sudden, uh, you know, Larry needs to take a piss. The problem is, is that he couldn't, for the life of him, find the bathroom because it was just so small. And in this restaurant, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, after a show, you know, you, you know, we drank a good amount of beer. And all of a sudden, Larry finds out that he doesn't want to be shamed to go into the women's restroom. So uh, what does he do? He decides, well, I'm just going to hold it in. There's a lot of pretty girls. He doesn't want to embarrass himself because he wanted to get himself some nookie that night. Um, and, I mean, now, just keep in mind, the women in this town don't exactly play offense on a football team. They play defense. So I, we found nothing appealing about them. But, you know, he had to hold his integrity. And I understand, you know, the man is, is a star, you know, and uh, all the girls are trying to chase him at the time. Uh, I don't know if they chase him now, but uh, I think they probably the only time that they actually beat him is at the uh, buffet din dinner table. And uh, I even I, I I actually I no you know what? With the way I feel right now, I could probably edge out uh, Larry in a buffet. Why not? Right. Uh, but, you know, Larry's getting his shit together and that's awesome, man. And uh, well, that so back in that one night when we traveled to Mianus, um and this town of like four or five hundred people, you know, the bathroom's broken. So we pay the, we flip the bill, 
Uh, Larry's nowhere to be seen. He actually just ran out. We had to pay for his portion because they chased us down all uh, $12 worth. And all of a sudden, Larry decides, hey, I need to take a piss, a long piss. So he goes into the corner, uh, into the next this guy's car, and apparently this old man comes out of nowhere, and as Larry's pissing, goes, old man says, what the fuck are you doing? Get out of there! And all of a sudden, Larry's like, oh my God! So Larry's being chased by this old man with a with a stick, and he's pissing while he's running across the guy's car once, twice, and then all of a sudden, the third go-around, he, he finishes pissing. We all saw his dick, and he, he had to put that in there. And uh, he, he ran into the car, and we sped off fast. And while we're in the car, right, this is the kicker of the road story that I'm telling you here about the USW. Uh, El Gran Maestro turns around and goes, oh, my, oh, Dios mio, you have the biggest dick I've ever seen on a man. And, well, there you have it. It's stupid, but fact of life, right? Um, let's see. Second question comes from Chris uh, over in the Minnesota Territory. Uh, Chris asks, so in your opinion, what do you think or who would you think would win in a fight between Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar? Now, if you talk in terms of pro wrestling, I would definitely have to say Brock because he's a bigger name, bigger attraction. He's the money guy uh, right now. If you want to talk in terms of real MMA, holy smokes, that's a good one. That's a fight I would actually like to see, whether it be in wrestling or in MMA. Uh, I'm going to save this question for my partner if he actually really ever comes back. Um, so I hope that will partially answer your question there, Chris. And the last question comes from uh, Elena. Uh, Elena, with an E, uh, spells her name, and she is basically, uh, she's actually writing to us from England. Speaking of England, uh, Elena says, do you think bare-knuckle boxing will actually make it in the United States? Well, I think anything can make it in the U.S., provided the fact that you actually really market it correctly because i think that americans buy into marketing they are into anything i think americans will try anything for one uh at least once and i think that that's pretty important to the culture and and all that other stuff so i think that that's a a, a vital piece so whoever's bringing it across the pond needs to know how to market to americans and i think that once you've done that and you get good connections, I think that you'll eventually you'll see that it's definitely worth an investment. I mean, if is it safer than mixed martial arts and all this other stuff? I'm really not sure, but I believe that it should be pretty good. Um, so I think that that would be it. We do have a plenty of other questions, and we would certainly, certainly like to hear from everybody. Uh, if you want to have, if you have any questions, please, by all means, email us at yin and yang podcast at gmail.com. Once again, that is yin and yang podcast at gmail.com. All right. So, um, before we go and we deplete the resources, I just wanted to say that, uh, the, I want to give a shout out to some really, really cool people. Uh, who have made a, a very, very significant contribution uh, to uh, the world of nutrition. Um, I want to give a shout out to the people at um, NutriBio. And oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Who is this? Hello, you are on the Yin and the Yang podcast. May I ask who's speaking? Hi, it's the highest paid podcaster. Um, in the most insane network. Oh my god! 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 Is this the legendary Glenn Notaro? Yes, it is. The man, the myth, and the legend himself. Holy smokes! First of all, allow me to do this, sir. 
allow me to do this. And if if you'll yeah. please excuse me, allow me to be a fanboy just once. Is that okay? That is fine. That's fine. It's okay. I get that all the time. Okay. It goes like this. Glenn Notaro. Glenn Notaro. Glenn Notaro. Now, Glenn? Yes. Before I even ask you or uh, anything or say anything to you, allow me to uh, basically say that during WrestleMania weekend, I'm not sure if you listened to the podcast, there was actually an indie promotion on WWE Access called WWN. Have you ever heard of them? Uh, yes, I have. I have heard of them. What do they actually? What does that promotion actually stand for? Um, I thought it was like World Wrestling Network. I could be wrong. Oh, okay. I, if Larry was I here, thought, he, he would have known, right? Oh, uh, yeah, he probably would have known. Right. Well, Larry's He's not old. here. I'm doing a solo show, right? And we actually invaded his compound. Uh, and let me tell you, this is a beautiful fucking place. It, it, it's like a 130, like I have like compared to my studio and his studio, my studio is like 132nd of his. <laughs> yeah. that, that place is huge. I don't know. It needs, he has his own like, um, zip codes on different, uh, wings he has. Unbelievable. The man has his own zip code. Can you believe this? Now, Glenn. <laughs> Now, yeah. I think it stands for World Wrestling Network or, or World Wide Network, something like that, right? Do you know what WWN stands for? It stands for? Walk, Walk with Notaro. With Notaro. What I said, what does WWN stand for? Walk with Notaro. Exactly. That's exactly yeah. what it stands for. My friends... Commandos, militants, the voice that you're listening to, w- along with me right now on call, on air, live on episode 32. It is really the Yin and the Yang podcast, but I, since I'm doing a hostile takeover, it's called the Anthony Chu Show. Right? This is the highest paid, highest uh, endorsed contract in the history of the More of the Same Network. This man has not even been in the airwaves we've been trying to get him on the airwaves for so long and who was the one who brought him in here me baby that's right you. that's right who what now let me ask let me give you a riddle what has two thumbs points and is the best in the world at what he does the one and only anthony chu oh actually i was thinking of you but i was going to say oh. second place <laughs> would be me right now, yes, yes, you know, I, I don't always want to think about myself, so I you have to think about others every now and then. Well, that that's that's very considerate of you. It's actually Jesus. It's like Larry's the devil, I'm the angel, and you're the guy making the the decision. That's pretty interesting. <laughs> you know, that's pretty cool. Glenn, should yes. we drop the bombshell on our listeners right now? Um, I say let's do it. All right. So as I have the greatest contracted free agent, uh, he was a free agent, and then he signed his contract with the more of the same network. Believe it or not, out my technical team here, Jeremiah has just given me the contract uh, that is Glenn Otaro's of the more of the same network. And not only that, before I even get into that contract, allow me to welcome you to a brand new family, buddy. And it ain't the more of the same network. Oh. So we last tell, night. Right. So last night you were in Nassau Coliseum. Am I correct? Yes, you are correct. All right. Now, I know that you had your luxury suite. You know, that was paid for by the network, you know, because he pays for everything else but mine. Uh, except <laughs> I, I do have to give him some credit. He did pay for that uh, that $30 meal that we had over at Buffalo Wild Wings last week. <laughs> right. Now, um, you are aware that. I am the only non-pro wrestling entity or uh, person who is actually signed with Titus Worldwide, right? Yes. Okay. Well, last night, uh, even though Apollo Crews and Titus, uh, you know, they had a a losing effort, um, you know, last night at Raw, uh, they, you know, Titus was a little upset. He gave me a call and he said, listen, he goes, I know I future endeavored your friend Larry. And I don't really feel that bad about it, 
but he goes, to be honest with you, he goes, uh, I was actually, as much as I was scouting the next talent for Titus Worldwide, right, I know people were scouting, they want to be a part of it. I just wanted to let you know, my friend, right now in my hands, the first contract I want to allow everyone to know is that Titus wants you to sign with Titus Worldwide. Worldwide? Oh, yes. Titus wants me. So Titus O'Neill, Apollo Cruz, and, well, Dana Brooke, wants you to be a part of Titus Worldwide. Well, you know what? I kind of like that idea very, very much. And I do accept the contract. I will wait for it in the mail. And so once it arrives, I will open it, take it out, have my legal team cruise it over, not saying that there's any shenanigans going on. Once I get to the thumbs up and the green light, I will take a pen, sign it, and send it right back to Mr. O'Neill himself. There you go. There you go. Fantastic. I'm glad I could be the liaison for all this. Now, um, uh, Mr. Nataro, I have to say one last thing. Sure. After 30 episodes, I have given this much consideration and much thought. And after 30 episodes, I have to be honest with you here. I promised the fans I would drop a major bombshell tonight. So do you know what that bombshell is? Hmm. I think I might have a hint. Oh, yes. I think I might have an inkling of what it could possibly be. There we go. Fans, allow me right now as a perfect segue into episode 33. Allow me. And everybody's been wondering where exactly will the great Glenn Notaro, where will he walk with? Who will walk with him? And you know where he's walking to? He is now, ladies and gentlemen, the new co-host of the Yin and the Yang. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, he is the new co-host to the Yin and the Yang. He is not only the most highest paid contracted member of the More of the Same Way Network, he is now a part of the Yin and the Yang family. My friend, we, we are going to make Glenn's Generals all right, are going to be amazing. We are going to have a, we're going to blaze a new trail, brother, in podcasting revolutionary, uh, you know, concepts, approaches. We are going to make this thing bigger than what it is, brother. We're going to make podcasts great again. No, no, no. Let's make podcasts great again. Exactly. <laughs> Let's make more of the same network great again. Exactly. Mm-hmm. You know, the committee does. And the generals are going to join forces and make this thing even bigger. Exactly. And we're going to take it. How, where are we going to take it? We're going to take it worldwide. Worldwide. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, I know your time is valuable. I know you got things to do. But, brother, I just wanted to make sure the fans knew it. They heard it from the man's mouth himself. Ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Otaro, everybody. Glenn Otaro. Woo! Thank you, thank you. Woo! Thank you for me, uh, be a part of the Yin and Yang. Absolutely, uh, yes, absolutely. Appreciate. I am so Don't glad that you are on, on the good guy's side. So survey says, one more for the good guys. Okay. All right, Mr. Notaro, I don't want to waste too much more of your time. You take good care of yourselves. Uh, you know, my agent will contact your agent, and we'll get this thing going, brother. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Um, have a great night. Uh, best of luck with uh, the rest of the show, and I'll text you for number 33. Oh, when you come on board next week for episode 33, we won't need no luck, baby, because we are going to be here to do a great podcast and chew bubblegum, and we're all out of bubblegum. Uh-oh. It means only one thing. Exactly. Let's kick some ass. So you take good care of yourself, Mr. Nutaro. Have a great night. Enjoy. All right. Thank you, sir. Take care. You're welcome. You're All right. Bye. Right. Bye. Look at that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, it do I, can I deliver or what? Not only have I delivered an A-list celebrity, I've delivered the future of the more of the same network. And his name is Glenn Notaro. 
For so long, everybody's been wondering, where is the hottest free agent going to land? Bigger than John Cena. Bigger than The Rock. Bigger than anything else that you've ever seen in the last two decades, three decades, four decades, five decades. He is now here at the yin of the yang. I'll give my product endorsement next week because I'm feeling so good right now. I Nothing can stop this show, brother. Okay, so now that we've depleted all the resources, allow me to say that I really hope this gets transmitted. I hope this gets broadcasted because Lord knows uh, I could be going to jail for this. I'm not really sure. But ultimately, in the end, I just want to prove that I can go past 30 minutes, past now, whatever it may be, I can do this, and I can definitely do this on my own merit, and I don't need uh, Larry to tell me what I can and cannot do in life because I do exactly what I want to do because I'm the champ, and I uh, – and I, what is that? What the hell is that? Uh, 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 Winston, go check that. Check that right now. Got to know what that is. If it, listen, I don't know what it is. You can never be unsure. I, I don't know why this door is stuck. I, I what the fuck? So you oh my god! Twenty dollars an hour, right? And then if we get that thing where you pull down my what? What, what the? What is going on in here? Oh my god! I, 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 upload it! Upload it! Wait, what, what is he doing on the floor? And why is he crying? Fuck, and, no. and Anthony, where are you going? What is happening here? Hey, what is? Why is he on the floor crying? <laughs>